From painting to photography, from beadwork to woodworking, KQAL-FM on the campus of Winona State University presents Artbeat. Artbeat highlights the work and accomplishments of local artists from in and around Winona. Support for Artbeat is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Today on Artbeat, we talked to Blake and Jennifer about the voices of the Winona Armory film that was shown at this year's Frozen River Film Festival. We talked to them about how long the film took, who helped make it, and a little about the historical society. This is KJ with Blake and Jennifer on Artbeat. Uh, so can both of you kind of just explain a little bit about what the film is? Sure. Hi. Um, yeah, it is um, an eight-minute film. Um, that is part of a larger project that is an exhibit about the armory. Um, and it is our, the building is our largest artifact. And so we really wanted to highlight it better. And so that exhibit does that. And we really wanted a personal connection um, because so many people have memories and have used the building as an armory and now as a museum. And the film really helps do that um, where you can look um, people in the eye and listen to them tell their stories and memories about this space and um, I think people have really enjoyed it and it was really neat to have it be part of the Frozen River Film Festival as well. Um, so who who all helped put the film together? Well it started probably here at the History Center with Jennifer and she put together a team and that would involve Jerome Christensen he was our writer. He wrote the piece. And um, up front, it was Brian Vordig at Engage Winona. Uh, he was crucial for just finding people in our community to um, to interview and to find out what we needed to know. He organized uh, some initial events here at the History Center. Um, and finally, I got involved more towards um, the production side of things. So I was helping Jerome record uh, and video the people we interviewed and then ultimately uh, editing the final film. Awesome. That's quite a nice team you guys had together. Uh, so where did all the photos that you used in the film come from? Well, we have a great archive here at the History Center, and so it was really fun going through and finding some of the old photos that have been donated over the decades here. And we were lucky to have a nice collection to pick from that Blake did such a great job working into the film. Uh, were any of the photos one of your favorites or any that you didn't use? I would have to say my favorite is probably the one of the World War I soldiers all lined up outside the front of the armory with the big doors open and you can see through to the window in the back and just looking at all the details of all their faces, how young they were, um, and being one of the first National Guard units to use the building, it's a pretty special photo to have. I would say just about everything that we could find made it in to the film because we needed um, we needed imagery to show they call it b-roll or whatever just while um, oh I forgot to m mention that our narrator yeah. from our team yeah uh, you may have heard of him um, Mark Peterson yeah he uh, lent his voice to us again awesome um, so how did you guys find and get a hold of the people who had used the building in the past Oh, that was really Brian and with Engage Winona's work. Um, he does such a fantastic job of oh, kind of going on a scavenger hunt for people, is the way he kind of put it when we were starting this project. And um, so we utilized local media. Um, he did personal phone calls, um, kind of word of mouth. This person knows that person. Um, some people just simply came forward from press releases and that sort of thing. So it really took a few avenues to get to those people. Um, and we're really thankful that they were willing to share their memories and stories. And speaking of all of the people that we were able to meet with in an interview, um, there was so much that we recorded that didn't make it into the film. Um, and I, uh, maybe this is one of your questions, but, uh, there's, I'll just talk about it. Um, what it, if we only used four minutes of their responses in the film, there's, uh, maybe 10, 20 times that much that we recorded. And that I believe is going to the archives downstairs. So, Yes, yeah, we're really um, thankful 
that we can store the rest of that footage, use it for future projects, um, simply keep it um, like we do a lot of our oral histories um, and have it be part of the collection forever. So those that didn't make it into the film are certainly not wasted and are there for researchers, future use, um, and it's just saved for for history for generations to come to to listen to. Awesome. So you guys mentioned the archives. Is it open for anyone to come and look at? Yes. Um, the Laird Lucas Library and Archives is in the History Center, actually in the basement level of the armory itself. So that's kind of neat. Um, it is open uh, Mondays through Fridays, 10 a.m. to noon, and then 1 to 5 to give our archivists a little bit of a lunch break in there. Um, but uh, we do get a lot of people who either make special appointments with them or email. Um, so even if you're not from Winona and are interested, doing, we get a lot of genealogy researchers, we get a lot of journalists doing research for stories, uh, and even local business owners learning a little bit more about the building they're in, even homeowners wanting to learn a little bit more about their old house they might own. And um, there's just all sorts of people who utilize those archives. Um, and they are a really fabulous resource and um, are quite pretty extensive. And so are definitely celebrated um, amongst local libraries and archives and historical societies around the region. So we're lucky to have the great collection we do. Awesome. I'll have to keep that in mind for the future because I'm actually going into journalism. So it's perfect. Um, So how long has it been since the armory was converted into the museum itself? Well, the armory um, had a fire in it in the late 1960s, and that is highlighted in the film as well in the exhibit. And that was really kind of the turning point. The National Guard unit was already looking into building a new facility with more modern amenities. Um, but that fire, um, which was caused by a lightning strike, um, really was the catalyst for moving that forward a little faster. So the histor- it didn't sit empty very long. The Historical Society was able to purchase it through some donation um, and moved in in the early 1970s. So we've been here ever since. Awesome. That's been quite a bit of time now. And like like you said, this is the most historical piece that you own, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, so you kind of talked a little bit about it, but what was it like having the film shown at Frozen River? Well, um, it was really nice. It was quite an honor. Um, and the Frozen River Film Festival has grown so much over the years and um, is really an awesome event and having been to it um a few times over over course of its lifetime um it's been fun to see it grow um and get these big you know name documentary films and other filmmakers and different um just aspects of it um so it was really neat to be a small part of it. Um, you know, we weren't, re- we didn't really do the project to have it be in a film festival, but definitely we're honored um, to be part of the local film set um, this year, and um, it was, it was exciting. Yeah. How did you guys then decide to have it shown in the festival? How were we? Yeah, was that your idea, or did um, Frozen River? Did it? Was it Sarah getting in touch with us? It was kind of. It, it was kind of both. Um, Sarah had mentioned that they're doing a local set and she being in the building, having an office within the history center, actually and the armory, um, (laughs) she knew we were doing this project and we just talked and she said, yeah, there would be room and it would be a great fit and they love having local, um, films. So it just kind of organically happened, I guess. It was also a good opportunity to just promote uh, the exhibit, which was kind of part of the grant. And that might be another good thing to just mention really quick. Um, Definitely. Yeah. I mean, it was a great avenue to um, spread the project to a wider audience who might not think to come to the History Center, but would come to a film festival. And um, this whole project is really... um, from a grant that we got from the Minnesota Humanities Center. And they have a Veterans Voices program. And so the root of all of this is that program. And they've 
worked with us on various projects with that over the course of the last couple of years, um, doing some readings and community discussions with veterans as well as civilians. And the goal is really to kind of bridge that gap. And so they were looking for local projects around the state that did that. And um, the armory was kind of that bridge as a place between local National Guard unit members, military members, as well as civilians, because as the film shows in the exhibit talks about too, it really had two sides to it of, you know, being, of course, first and foremost, a military training center for the Minnesota National Guard unit in Winona, but also the civilians used it quite often and regularly for roller skating and dances and car shows. And, oh my gosh, the list is really kind of seemingly endless of all the other public events that are held, that were held here as well. So as a space, as a place, um, it really is literally a bridge of that divide between the civilian and veteran members of our community and something that they can say they have in common. That is really amazing. Um, so how long did it take to produce and edit the film? Let's see. Um, it was about eight minutes total. Um, it easily takes, you know, four or five hours per minute uh, of a produced um footage in the end and then there's just time to sit down together and review it um but i I would put it in the vicinity of what would you would that be do the math for me five uh, about 30 40 hours or so all told yeah Yeah. we did you know you kind of quit counting all the little steps that you take but nice i talking to others they said that they took like months and stuff and i'm like just that time is it's a nice drop down <laughs> um so is there anything that you want viewers to take away from the film oh well, i would hope viewer, viewers appreciate um you know these community members coming out to tell their stories and even though it's through a film talking to others about their memories um and um what these places um in our community and um events and other things that go on uh, mean to them. Um, So it kind of brings our past up to today and is really kind of a nice example of um, how we really do have a shared story. And even though something might seem um, not really important and, oh, you know, my life's pretty simple, kind of all together, it makes that big picture and our, our big his, historical context, you know. Um, so we put kind of weave all these little stories together to create a larger um, picture of what life was like. And so um, it's all important. So I am really thrilled that these people um, realized that and were willing to share that with the rest of the community as well as visitors to the area um, about our, our history, our story, our past, our memories. Um, those are all things we share. So very very well said (laughs) um so where can we learn more about the armory and the historical society you can learn more you can go online at winonahistory.org where also can be found on facebook as well as instagram Um, we have a ton of programs and fun things going on all the time um the History Center is also open seven days a week, so you can even just stop down and visit us um, in person. And um, our phone number, if you'd like to give us a call, is also 507-454-2723. One last thing. So speaking of hours, what, what, what time can they come visit the museum? That is a great question. So weekdays, Monday through Fridays, we are open 9 to 5, Saturdays 10 to 4, and then Sundays noon to 4. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. It was incredible just listening to the history behind this because I'm not from here, but I live nearby and I just never knew that this was such a big part of our history in town. Thanks again to Blake and Jennifer for the interview. To watch the film, head on over to the Historical Society to see the exhibit. To stream today's episode or any other episode of Artbeat, go to kqal.org under Media, Program Archives. This is KJ on Artbeat. Artbeat is written and produced by KQAL-FM on the campus of Winona State University. Visit us on the web at kqal.org.
Is art an important part of your life? Tune into Artbeat, Tuesdays at 12.30, right here on 89.5 KQAL. Artbeat is made possible by a grant from the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund.